Selenunt, ancient Greek, Selenus, Selenus, Latin, Selenus, was an ancient Greek city on the southwestern coast of Sicily in Italy. It was situated between the valleys of the Catoni and Modioni rivers. It now lies in the Comune Castelfrano, between the Frazioni of Trishina di Selenunt in the west and Marinella di Selenunt in the east. The archaeological site contains five temples centered on a necropolis. Of the five temples, only the Temple of Hera, also known as Temple E, has been re erected. At its peak before 409 BC, the city may have contained up to 30,000 people, excluding slaves. History Selenunt was one of the most important of the Greek colonies in Sicily, situated on the southwest coast of that island, at the mouth of the small river of the same name, and 6.5 km west of the Hypsis River the modern Belus. It was founded, according to the historian Thucydides, by a colony from the Sicilian city of Megara Hyblaea, under the leadership of a man called Pamilus, about 100 years after the foundation of Megara Hyblaea, with the help of colonists from Megara in Greece, which was Megara Hyblaea's mother city. The date of its foundation cannot be precisely fixed, as Thucydides indicates it only by reference to the foundation of Megara Hyblaea, which is itself not accurately known, but it may be placed about 628 BCE. Diodorus places it 22 years earlier, or 650 BCE, and Hieronymus still further back in 654 BCE. The date from Thucydides, which is probably the most likely, is incompatible with this earlier date. The name is supposed to have been derived from quantities of wild celery ancient Greek, Selenon Romanized, Selenon, that grew on the spot. For the same reason, they adopted the celery leaf as the symbol on their coins. Selenunt was the most westerly of the Greek colonies in Sicily, and for this reason they soon came into contact with the Phoenicians of western Sicily and the native Sicilians in the west and northwest of the island. The Phoenicians do not at first seem to have conflicted with them, but as early as 580 BCE the Selenantines were engaged in hostilities with the non-Greek Elymian people of Segesta, whose territory bordered their own. A body of emigrants from Rhodes and Canidus who subsequently founded Lepara, supported the Segestans on this occasion, leading to their victory, but disputes and hostilities between the Segestans and Selenantines seem to have occurred frequently, and it is possible that when Diodorus speaks of the Segestans being at war with the Lilibians modern Masala, in 454 BCE, that the Selenantines are the people really meant. The river Mazaris, which at that time appears to have formed the boundary with Segesta, was only about 25 km west of Selenunt, and it is certain that at a somewhat later period the territory of Selenunt extended to its banks, and that that city had a fort and emporium at its mouth. On the other side Selenunt's territory certainly extended as far as the Halicus modern Platani, at the mouth of which it founded the colony of Manoa, or Heraclea, as it was afterward called. It is clear, therefore, that Selenunt had already achieved great power and prosperity, but very little information survives about its history. Like most of the Sicilian cities, it passed from an oligarchy to a tyranny, and about 510 BCE was subject to a despot named Pythagoras, who was overthrown with the assistance of the Spartan Eurelian, one of the companions of Dorius. Eurelian himself ruled the city, for a little while, but was speedily overthrown and put to death by the Selenantines. The Selenantines supported the Carthaginians during the great expedition of Hamilcar, 480 BCE. They even promised to send a contingent to the Carthaginian army, but this did not arrive until after Hamilcar's defeat at the Battle of Himera. The Selenantines are next mentioned in 466 BCE, cooperating with the other cities of Sicily to help the Syracusans to expel Thrasybulus. Thucydides speaks of Selenunt just before the Athenian expedition in 416 BCE as a powerful and wealthy city, possessing great resources for war both by land and sea, and having large stores of wealth accumulated in its temples. Diodorus also represents it at the time of the Carthaginian invasion, as having enjoyed a long period of tranquility, and possessing a numerous population. The walls of Selenunt enclosed an area of approximately 100 hectares 250 acres. The population of the city has been estimated at 14,000 to 19,000 people during the 5th century BC. Topic. 
Topic: The Sicilian Expedition. In 416 BCE, a renewal of the earlier disputes between Selenon and Segesta led to the Great Athenian Expedition to Sicily. The Selenontines called on Syracuse for assistance, and were able to blockade the Segestans, but the Segestans appealed to Athens for help. The Athenians do not appear to have taken any immediate action to save Segesta, but no further conflict around Segesta is recorded. When the Athenian expedition first arrived in Sicily, 415 BCE, Thucydides presents the general niches as proposing that the Athenians should proceed to Selenon at once and compel the Selenontines to surrender on moderate terms, but this advice was overruled and the expedition sailed against Syracuse instead. As a result, the Selenontines played only a minor part in the subsequent operations. They are, however, mentioned on several occasions providing troops to the Syracusans, and it was at Selenunt that the large Peloponnesian force sent to support Gylippus landed in the spring of 413 BCE, having been driven over to the coast of Africa by a tempest. Topic. Captured by Carthage The defeat of the Athenian armament apparently left the Segestans at the mercy of their rivals. They surrendered the frontier district that was the original subject of dispute to Selenon. The Selenontines, however, were not satisfied with this concession, and continued their hostility against them, leading the Segestans to seek assistance from Carthage. After some hesitation, Carthage sent a small force, with the assistance of which the Segestans defeated the Selenontines in a battle. The Carthaginians in the following spring 409 BCE sent over a vast army containing 100,000 men according to the lowest ancient estimate led by Hannibal Mago the grandson of Hamilcar that was killed at Hymera. The army landed at Lilibium, and directly marched from there to Selenun. The city's inhabitants had not expected such a force and were wholly unprepared to resist it. The city fortifications were, in many places, in disrepair, and the armed forces promised by Syracuse, Acragas, modern Agrigento, and Gela, were not ready and did not arrive in time. The Selenontines fought the Carthaginians on their own and continued to defend their individual houses even after the walls were breached. However, the enemy's overwhelming numbers made resistance hopeless, and after a ten-day siege the city was taken and most of the defenders put to death. According to sources, 16,000 of the citizens of Selenun were killed, 5,000 were taken prisoner, and 2,600 under the command of Empedian escaped to Acragas. Subsequently, a considerable number of the survivors and fugitives were gathered together by Hermocrates of Syracuse, and established within the walls of the city. Shortly after, Hannibal destroyed the city walls, but gave permission to the surviving inhabitants to return and occupy it as tributaries of Carthage. A considerable part of the citizens of Selenunt took up this offer, which was confirmed by the treaty subsequently concluded between Dionysius, tyrant of Syracuse, and the Carthaginians, in 405 BCE. Destruction The Selenontines are again mentioned in 397 BCE when they supported Dionysius during his war with Carthage, but both the city and territory were again given up to the Carthaginians by the peace of 383 BCE. Although Dionysius reconquered it shortly before his death, it soon returned to Carthaginian control. The Halicus River, which was established as the eastern boundary of the Carthaginian dominion in Sicily by the Treaty of 383 BCE, seems to have generally continued to have been the border, despite temporary interruptions, and was again fixed as the border by the Treaty with Agathocles in 314 BCE. This last treaty expressly stipulated that Selenunt, as well as Heraclea and Hymera, were subjects of Carthage, as before. In 276 BCE, however, during the expedition of Pyrrhus to Sicily, the Selenontines voluntarily joined Pyrrhus, after the capture of Heraclea. By the First Punic War, Selenon was again under Carthaginian control, and its territory was repeatedly the theatre of military operations between the Romans and the Carthaginians. But before the close of the war, about 250 BCE, when the Carthaginians were beginning to pull back, and confine themselves to the defense of as few places as possible, they removed all the inhabitants of Selenunt to Lilibium and destroyed the city, it seems certain that it was never rebuilt. 
Pliny the Elder mentions its name, Selinus Oppidum, as if it still existed as a town in his time, but Strabo distinctly classes it with extinct cities. Ptolemy, though he mentions the river Selinus, does not mention a town of the name. The Thermi Selinantii at modern Chiaca, which derived their name from the ancient city, and seemed to have been much frequented in the time of the Romans, was situated at a considerable distance, 30 km, from Selinun. They are sulfurous springs, still much valued for their medical properties, and dedicated, like most thermal waters in Sicily, to San Calagero. At a later period they were called the Aquilabodes or La Rhodes, under which name they appear in the itineraries. Topic. Archaeological remains The city is beside the sea, between the Modioni River the ancient Selinus in the west and the Catoni River in the east, on two high areas connected by a saddle. The part of the city to the south, next to the sea, contains the Acropolis which is based around two intersecting streets and contains many temples A, B, C, D, O. The part of the city to the north, further inland, contained housing on the Hippodamian plan contemporary with the Acropolis and two necropolis Galera Bagliazzo and Manuza. Other important remains are found on the high places across the rivers to the east and west of the city. In the east there are three temples e, F, G, and an Acropolis buffer north of the modern village of Marinella. In the west are the most ancient remains of Selinus, the sanctuary of the Malophoros and the archaic necropolis Pipio, Manicolunga, Timpone Nero. The two ports of the city were in the mouths of the city's two rivers. The modern archaeological park, which covers about 40 hectares can therefore be divided into the following areas. The Acropolis at the center with temples and fortifications. Gagara Hill in the west, with the sanctuary of Malophoros. Manaza Hill in the north with ancient housing The East Hill in the east, with other temples The Necropolis Topic The Acropolis The Acropolis is a chalk massif with a cliff face falling into the sea in the south, while the north end narrows to 140 metres wide. The settlement in the form of a massive trapezoid, extended to the north with a large retaining wall in terraces about 11 meters high, and was surrounded by a wall repeatedly restored and modified with an exterior of squared stone blocks and an interior of rough stone emplecton. It had five towers and four gates. To the north, the Acropolis was fortified by a counter wall and towers from the beginning of the 4th century BC. At the entrance to the Acropolis is the so-called Tower of Pollux, constructed in the 16th century to deter the Barbary pirates, atop the remains of an ancient tower or lighthouse. The urban plan is divided in quarters by two main streets 9 meters wide, which cross at right angles the north-south road is 425 meters long, the east-west is 338 meters long. Every 32 meters they are intersected by other minor roads 5 meters wide. This urban systemization, which followed a more ancient model, dates to the 4th century BC, i.e. to the period of Punic rule. Multiple altars and little sanctuaries may be attributed to the first years of the colony, which were replaced around 50 years later by large, more permanent temples. The first of these is the so-called Megaron near temples B and C. In front of Temple O there is a Punic sacrificial area from after the conquest of 409 BC, consisting of rooms built of dry masonry within which vases containing ashes were deposited along with amphorae of the Carthaginian torpedo type. On the hill of the Acropolis are the remains of numerous Doric temples. Temple O and Temple A of which little remains except for the rocky basement and the altar which was constructed between 490 and 460 BC. They had nearly identical structures, similar to that of Temple E on the East Hill. The peristyle was 16.2 meters wide and 40.2 meters long with 6 by 14 columns 6 meters high. Inside there was a pronaus in antes, a naus with an adytan and an opistodomos in antes, separate from the naus. The naus was a step higher than the pronaus and the adytan was a step higher again. In the wall between the pronaus and the naus in Temple A two spiral staircases led to the gallery or floor above. 
The pronouncer Temple A has a mosaic pavement showing symbolic figures of the Phoenician goddess Tanit, a caduceus, the sun, a crown, and a bull's head, which testifies to the reuse of the space as a religious or domestic area in the Punic period. Temple O was dedicated to Poseidon or perhaps Athena, Temple A to the Dioscuri or perhaps to Apollo. Point three four meters east of Temple A are the remains of the monumental entrance to the area, which took the form of a propylia with a floor plan in the shape of AT, made up of a 13 by 5.6 meters rectangle with a peristyle of 5 by 12 columns and another rectangle of 6.78 by 7.25 meters. Across the east-west street there is a second sacred area, north of the preceding. There, to the south of Temple C, is a shrine 17.65 meters long and 5.5 meters wide which dates from 580 to 570 BC and has the archaic form of the Megaron, perhaps intended to hold votive offerings. Lacking a pronouce, the entrance at the eastern end passed directly into the nous, at the center of which there are two bases for the wooden columns which held up the roof. At the back there was a square adytum, to which a third space was added in a later period. The shrine was perhaps dedicated to Demeter Thesmophoros. To the right of the shrine is Temple B from the Hellenistic period, which is small 8.4 by 4.6 meters and in bad condition. It is made up of a prostyle portico of four columns which is reached by a stairway with nine steps, followed by a pronouse and nous. In 1824 clear traces of polychrome stucco were still visible. Probably constructed around 250 BC, a short time before Selenus was abandoned for good, it represents the only religious building that attests to the modest revival of the city after its destruction in 409. Its purpose remains obscure. In the past, it was believed to be the Herun of Empedocles, benefactor of the Selenantine marshes, but this theory is no longer sustainable, given the building's date. Today it is thought more likely to be a strongly Hellenized Punic cult, perhaps to Demeter or Asclepius Eshman. Temple C is the oldest in this area, dating from 550 BC. In 1925-7 the 14 of the north side's 17 columns were re-erected, along with part of the entablature. It had a peristyle 24 by 63.7 meters of 6 by 17 columns 8.62 meters high. The entrance is reached by eight steps and consists of a portico with a second row of columns and then the pronouse. Behind it is the nous and adytum in a single long narrow structure an archaic characteristic. It has basically the same floor plan as Temple F on the East Hill. Multiple elements show a certain experimentation and divergence from the pattern of the Doric temple which later became the standard. The columns are squat and massive, some are even made from a single stone, lack entesis, show variation in the number of flutes, the width of the intercolumniation varies, the corner columns have a larger diameter than the others, etc. Finds in the temple include, some fragments of red, brown, and purple polychrome terracotta from the cornice decoration, a gigantic 2.5 meter high feet clay gorgon head from the pediment, three metopes representing Perseus slaying the Gorgon, Heracles with the Circopes, and a frontal view of the Quadriga of Apollo, all of which are in the Museo Archaeologico di Palermo. Temple C probably functioned as an archive, since hundreds of seals have been found here and was dedicated to Apollo, according to epigraphic evidence, or perhaps Heracles. East of Temple C is its rectangular grand altar, 20.4 meters long by 8 meters wide, of which the foundations and some steps remain. After that, there is the area of the Hellenistic Agora. A little further, there are the remains of houses, and the terrace is bordered by a Doric portico, 57 meters long and 2.8 meters deep, which overlooks part of the wall supporting the Acropolis. Next is Temple D, which is dated to 540 BC. The west face fronts directly onto the north-south street. The peristyle is 24 meters times 56 meters on a 6 times 13 column pattern, each 7.51 meters high. There is a pronouse in antes, an elongated nous, ending in an adytum. It is more standardized than Temple C. The columns are slightly inclined, more slender, and have entesis. The portico is supported by a distal pronouse in antes, but it retains some archaic features, such as variation in the length of the intercolumniation and the diameter of the columns, as well as in the number of flutes per column. As with Temple C, there are many circular and square cavities in the pavement of the peristyle and of the nous, whose function is unknown. Temple D was dedicated to Athena according to epigraphic evidence or perhaps to Aphrodite. 
The large external altar is not oriented to the temple's axis, but placed obliquely near the southwest corner, which suggested that an earlier temple occupied the same site on a different axis. East of Temple D is a small altar in front of the basement of an archaic shrine, Temple Y, also known as the Temple of the Small Metopes. The recovered metopes have a height of 84 cm and can be dated to 570 BC. They depict a crouching sphinx in profile, the Delphic triad Leto, Apollo, Artemis in rigid frontal view, and the Rape of Europa. Another two metopes can be dated to around 560 BC and were recycled in the construction of Hermocrates' wall. They show the quadriga of Demeter and Kor, or Helios and Selene. Apollo, and an Elevsinian ceremony with three women holding ears of grain Demeter, Kor, and Hecate. The Moirai. They are kept at the Museo Archeologico di Palermo. Between temples C and D are the ruins of a Byzantine village of the 5th century AD, built with recycled stone. The fact that some of the houses were crushed by the collapse of the columns of Temple C shows that the earthquake which caused the collapse of the Selenantine temples occurred in the medieval period. To the north, the Acropolis holds two quarters of the city, one west and the other east of the main north-south street, rebuilt by Hermocrates after 409 BC. The houses are modest, built with recycled material. Some of them contain incised crosses, a sign that they were later adapted as Christian buildings or inhabited by Christians. Further north, before the main area of habitation, there are the grandiose fortifications for the defense of the Acropolis. They are paralleled by a long gallery originally covered with numerous vaulted passages, followed by a deep defensive ditch crossed by a bridge, with three semicircular towers at west, north, and east. Around the outside of the North Tower which had a weapons store at its base are the entrances to the east-west trench, with passages in both the walls. Only a small part of the fortifications belong to the old city, they are mostly from Hermocrates' reconstruction and successive repairs in the 4th and 3rd centuries. The fact that architectural elements were recycled into it demonstrates that some of the temples were already abandoned in 409 BC. Manuza Hill North of the Acropolis on Manuza Hill, the modern street traces the border of an area in the form of a massive trapezoid in which the ancient agora was presumably located. The whole area was occupied by habitation on the Hippodamian plan, reconstructed by means of aerial photography, on a slightly different orientation from the Acropolis, with elongated insulae of 190 by 32 meters oriented north-south, which were originally surrounded by a defensive wall. There have not been systematic excavations in the area, but there have been some soundages, which have confirmed that the area was inhabited from the foundation of Selinus 7th century BC 0 and therefore was not a later expansion of the city. After the destruction of Selinus in 409, this area of the city was not re-inhabited. The refugees returned by Hermocrates were settled only on the Acropolis, which was more defensible. In 1985 a tupa structure was discovered on the hill, probably a public building of the 5th century BC. Further north, beyond the housing, are two necropolis, Manuza and the older 7th and 6th century, one in Galera Bagliazzo. The East Hill There are three temples on the East Hill, which although all in the same area on the same north-south axis seem not to have belonged to a single sacred compound Temenos, since there is a wall separating Temple E from Temple F. This sacred complex has strong parallels with the western slopes of the Acropolis of Megara, Selenus's mother city, which are useful perhaps indispensable, for the correct attribution of the cults of the three temples. Temple E the most recent of the three, dates to 460–450 BC and has a very similar plan to that of Temples A and O on the Acropolis. Its current appearance is the result of anastolosis reconstruction using the original material carried out, controversially, between 1956 and 1959. The peristyle is 25.33 by 67.82 meters with a 6 by 15 column pattern, each 10.19 meters high, with numerous traces of the stucco which originally covered it remaining. 
It is a temple characterized by multiple staircases creating a system of successive levels. Ten steps lead to the entrance on the eastern side, after the pronouse in Antes, another six steps lead into the nous, and finally another six steps lead into the adytan at the rear of the nous. Behind the adytan, separated from it by a wall, was the opisthodomos in Antes. A Doric frieze at the top of the walls of the nous consisted of metopes depicting people, with the heads and naked parts of the women made of Parian marble and the rest from local stone. Four metopes are preserved, Heracles killing the Amazon Antiope, the marriage of Hera and Zeus, Actaeon being torn apart by Artemis hunting dogs, Athena killing the giant Enceladus, and another more fragmentary one perhaps depicting Apollo and Daphne. All of them are kept in the Museo Archeologico di Palermo. Recent soundages performed inside the temple and under Temple E have revealed that it was preceded by two other sacred buildings, one of which was destroyed in 510 BC. Temple E was dedicated to Hera as shown by the inscription on a votive stella but some scholars deduce that it must have been dedicated to Aphrodite on the basis of structural parallels. Temple F, the oldest and smallest of the three, was built between 550 and 540 BC on the model of Temple C of the temples it has been the most severely spoliated. Its peristyle was 24.43 by 61.83 meters on a 6 by 14 column pattern, each 9.11 meters high, with stone screens 4.7 meters high in the space between the columns, with false doors painted in with pilasters and architraves. The actual entrance was at the east end. It is not clear what the purpose of these screens, which are unique among Greek temples, was. Some think they were intended to protect votive gifts or to prevent particular rites Dionysian mysteries, being seen by the uninitiated. Inside, there is a portico containing a second row of columns, a pronouse, a nous, and an adytan in single long, narrow structure an archaic characteristic. On the east side, two late archaic metopes dated to 500 BC were found in excavations in 1823, which depict Athena and Dionysus in the process of killing two giants. Today they are kept in the Regional Archaeological Museum Antonio Salinas. Scholars have suggested that Temple F was dedicated to either Athena or Dionysus. Temple G was the largest in Selenus, 113.34 meters long, 54.05 meters wide and about 30 meters high and was among the largest in the Greek world. This building, although under construction from 530 to 409 BC, the long period of construction is demonstrated by the variation of style. The east side is archaic, while the west side is classical, remained incomplete, as shown by the absence of fluting on some of the columns and by the existence of column drums of the same dimensions 10 km away at Cave Dikusa, still in the process of extraction. See below. In the massive pile of ruins it is possible to make out a peristyle of 8 by 17 columns 16.27 meters high and 3.41 meters in diameter, only one of which remains standing since it was re-erected in 1832, known in Sicilian as Lufusu di la Vecchia, the place of the ancient pillar. The interior consisted of a prostyle pronounce with four columns, with two deep anti-walls ending in pilasters and three doors leading to the large nous. The nous was very large and divided into three aisles, the middle one was probably open to the air hypathros. There were two rows of ten slender columns which supported a second row of columns, the gallery, and two lateral staircases which led to the roof space. At the back of the central aisle was an adytan, separated from the walls of the nous and entirely contained within it. Inside the adytan, the torso of a wounded or dying giant was found as well as the very important inscription known as the Great Table of Selenus see below. At the rear there was an opisthodomos in Antes, which could not be accessed from the nous. Of particular interest among the ruins are some finished columns showing traces of colored stucco and blocks of the entablature which have horseshoe-shaped grooves on the sides. Ropes were run through these grooves and used to lift them into place. Temple G probably functioned as the treasury of the city and epigraphic evidence suggests that it was dedicated to Apollo, though recent studies have suggested that it be attributed to Zeus. At the foot of the hill by the mouth of the river Catoni was the east port, which was more than 600 meters wide on the inside and was probably equipped with a mole or breakwater to protect the Acropolis. It underwent changes in the 4th and 3rd centuries, it was enlarged and flanked by piers oriented north-south and by storage areas. 
Are the two ports of Selenus, which are both now silted up, the west port on the river Selenus Modioni was the main one. The extramural quarters, dedicated to trade, commerce and port activities was arranged on massive terraces on the hillslopes. North of the modern village of Marinella, is the buffer necropolis. <laughs> Gagara Hill with the Sanctuary of the Malophoros A path runs from the Acropolis, over the river Modioni to the West Hill. On Gagara Hill there are the remains of the very ancient Selinantine sanctuary to the goddess of fertility, Demeter Malophoros, excavated continuously between 1874 and 1915. The complex, in varying states of preservation, was built in the 6th century BC on the slope of the hill and probably served as a station for funerary processions, before they proceeded to the Manikalunga necropolis. Initially, the place was definitely free of buildings and provided an open area for cult practices at the altar. Later, with the erection of the temple and of the high enclosure wall Temenos, it was transformed into a sanctuary. This sanctuary consisted of a rectangular enclosure 60 by 50 meters, which was entered on the east side through a rectangular propylia in Antis built in the 5th century BC, fronted by a short staircase and a circular structure. Outside of the enclosure, the propylia is flanked by the remains of a long portico stoa, with seats for the pilgrims, who left evidence of themselves in the form of various altars and votives. Inside the enclosure, there was the large altar 16.3 meters long by 3.15 meters wide in the center, on top of a pile of ashes from the bones and other parts of the sacrifices. It had an extension to the southwest, while the remains of an earlier archaic altar are visible near the northwest extremity and there is a square pit on the temple side of the altar. Between the altar and the temple there is a canal carved in the rock which, comes from the north, through the whole area, carrying water to the sanctuary from a nearby spring. Just past the canal is the temple of Demeter itself in the form of a megaron 20.4 by 9.52 meters, lacking a crepidoma or columns, but equipped with a pronaus, naus and adytan with a niche in the back. A rectangular service room is attached to the north side of the pronaus. The megaron had an earlier phase recognizable only at the foundation level. South of the temple there is a square structure and a rectangular structure of unclear function. North of the temple, another structure from a later period with two rooms opening onto the inside and outside of the temenos forms a secondary entrance to the enclosure. The south wall of the enclosure was periodically reinforced to fight the subsidence of the hillside. South of the propylia, attached to the wall of the enclosure, was another enclosure dedicated to Hecate. This took the form of a square, with the shrine in the east corner, near an entrance, while in the south corner there was a small square paved space of uncertain purpose. Fifteen meters north there was another square enclosure, 17 by 17 meters dedicated to Zeus Milicios, Honey Sweet Zeus, and Pasicratea, Persephone, much of which remains, but it is not easy to understand the various structures, which were built at the end of the 4th century BC. It consists of an enclosure wall surrounded by various types of column on two sides, part of a Hellenistic portico, a small prostyle temple in Antis 5.22 by 3.02 meters, at the back of the enclosure with monolithic Doric columns, but an Ionic entablature, and two others in the center of the enclosure. Outside, to the west, the pious dedicated many small steels topped by images of the divine pair, two faces, one male and one female, made with shallow incisions. Along with them were found ashes and remains of offerings, evidence of convergence between the Greek cult of the Shtonic gods and Punic religion. A very large number of finds came from the sanctuary of the Malophoros, all kept at the museum in Palermo, carved reliefs of mythological scenes, around 12,000 votive figurines in terracotta from the 7th to 5th centuries BC, large bust-shaped censers depicting Demeter and perhaps Tanit, a great quantity of Corinthian pottery, late Proto-Corinthian and early Corinthian, a base relief depicting the rape of Persephone by Hades found at the entrance to the enclosure. Christian remains, especially lamps with the monogram XP, prove the presence of a Christian religious community in the area of the sanctuary between the 3rd and 5th centuries AD. A little further up the slopes of Gagara Hill is the spring from which the sanctuary of the Malophoros gets its water. 
50 meters downstream of it is a building once believed to be a temple the so-called Temple M, which is actually a monumental fountain. It is rectangular in shape 26.8 meters long by 10.85 meters wide by 8 meters high, constructed of squared blocks and contained a cistern, a closed basin protected by a portico with columns and an access staircase of four steps with a large paved area in front of it. The building is in the Doric style and is dated to the middle of the 6th century mainly by the architectural terracotta discovered there. The fragments of metopes with the Amazonomachy, although found nearby, do not belong to the building, which had small, smooth metopes. Another megaron, a few hundred meters to the northeast of the sanctuary of the Malophorus, has been excavated recently. The necropolis Around Selenus some areas used as necropolis can be identified. Buffa end of the 7th century BC and the 6th century, north of the East Hill. The site contains a triangular votive ditch 25 by 18 by 32 meters with terracotta, vases and animal remains probably from sacrifices. Galera Bagliazzo 6th century BC, northeast of Manuza Hill. In the tombs dug into the tufa here, none apparently singular, are grave goods of various styles. In 1882 the statues called the Ephebe of Selenus was brought to light here, today it is in the Civic Museum of Casteltrano. Pipio Bresciana and Manicolunga Timpone Nero 6th to 5th century BC, west of Gagra Hill, the most extensive of Selenus's necropolis. Given its distance from the city center it is not clear whether it was the necropolis of the city or of a suburban area. As well as evidence of inhumations, there are amphorae and pithoi which testify to the practice of cremation. The sarcophagi are in terracotta or tufa. There are also covered rooms. <laughs> Cave di Cusa Cave di Cusa, the quarries of Cusa are made up of banks of limestone near Campobello di Mazara, 13 km from Selenus. They were the stone quarries from which the material for the buildings of Selenus came. The most notable element of the quarries is the sudden interruption of operations caused by the attack on the city in 409 BC. The sudden departure of the quarrymen, stonemasons and other workers means that today it is possible not just to reconstruct, but to see all the various stages of the quarrying process from the first deep circular cuts to the finished drums waiting to be transported. Along with the column drums, there are also some capitals and also square incisions for quarrying square blocks, all intended for the temples of Selenus. Of the drums that had already been extracted, some were found ready for transport and others, already on the way to Selenus were abandoned on the road. Some gigantic columns, definitely intended for Temple G, are found in the area west of Cave di Cusa, also in the state in which they were originally abandoned. Topic coinage The coins of Selenus are numerous and various. The earliest, as already mentioned, bear merely the figure of a parsley leaf on the obverse. Those of somewhat later date represent a figure sacrificing on an altar, which is consecrated to Aesculapius, as indicated by a cock that stands below it. The subject of this type evidently refers to a story related by Diogenes Laetius that the Selenantines were afflicted with a pestilence from the marshy character of the lands adjoining the neighboring river, but that this was cured by works of drainage, suggested by Empedocles. A figure standing on some coins is the river god Selenus, who was thus made conducive to the salubrity of the city. The seal of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine is based on a coin of Selenus struck in 466 BC which was designed by the sculptor and medalist Alan Gardner Y on FRBS RMS it shows two Greek gods associated with health, Apollo, the god of prophecy, music and medicine, and his sister Artemis, goddess of hunting and chastity, and comforter of women in childbirth, in a horse-drawn chariot. Artemis is driving while her brother the great archer is shooting arrows. The fruitful date palm was added to indicate the tropical activities of the school but also has a close connection with Apollo and Artemis. When their mother Leto gave birth to them on the island of Delos, miraculously a palm sprang up to give her shade in childbirth. Asclepius, Apollo's son, was the god of ancient Greek medicine, and was frequently shown holding a staff entwined with a snake. 
Snakes were used in this healing cult to lick the affected part of the patient. Significantly Asclepius's daughters were Hygieia the goddess of health, and Panacea the healer of all ailments. Asclepius's staff with a snake coiled round it known as a symbol of the medical professions was placed at the base of the seal to emphasize the medical interests of the school. The seal was redesigned in 1990 by Russell Sewell Design Associates, and is retained today within the current school logo. Art and other discoveries from Selenus The Great Table of Selenus was discovered in the Adderton of Temple G in 1871. It contains a catalogue of the cults practiced at Selenus and is therefore the basis for all attempts to determine the cults of the various temples of Selenus. It says, "...the Selenantines are victorious thanks to the gods Zeus, Phobos, Heracles, Apollo, Poseidon, the Tindaridae, Athena, Demeter, Pasicratea and other gods, but especially thanks to, Eus." After the restoration of peace it was decreed that a work be done in gold with the names of the gods inscribed, with Zeus at the top and that it be deposited in the Temple of Apollo, and that sixteen talents of gold be spent on this." The figurative art recovered at Selenus is very important and much of it is kept in the Regional Archaeological Museum Antonio Salinas. The best examples of the distinctive archaic artistic style of Selenus are the Medopes, most of which are discussed above in the context of their temples. The Ephebe of Selenus is a bronze statue of an Ephebe offering a libation, cast in a severe style, with features typical of the Greek West and dating to 470 BC. Apart from the Ram of Syracuse, it represents the only large-scale bronze work which has survived from Greek Sicily. It is kept at Castelfrano. The necropolis have yielded a very large number of Proto-Corinthian, Corinthian, Rhodian and Attic black figure vases, but no unique local pottery since Selenus did not produce fine pottery. Some of the most valuable votive material was found in the sanctuary of the Malophoros, such as terracotta statuettes, ceramics, incense busts, altars, a base relief depicting the rape of Persephone by Hades, and Christian lamps have been discussed above. These items are kept in the Museo Archeologico di Palermo and some of them are on display. <laughs> Metopes of Selenus Gallery Terracotta Statuettes Gallery Topic General Gallery Topic See also Marinella di Selenunt Architecture of Ancient Greece Cave di Cusa Greek Temple List of Greco Roman roofs Equals equals notes